exactly one year to the date away from the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup in France. Tonight, though, the first of what will be two exhibition games between the defending World Cup champion, the United States, against China. The U.S. Women's National Team pregame show is sponsored by AT&T. A beautiful evening in Sandy, Utah. Hot though, 87 degrees. Fans still filing into Rio Tinto Stadium. Hey everybody, I'm Katie with them down on the sideline alongside former U.S. Women's National Team standout Leslie Osborne. Thanks so much for joining us, Leslie. It's hard to believe we are one week away from the Men's World Cup in Russia, one year away from the Women's World Cup in France. Eight nations have already qualified, including tonight's opponent, China. For the U.S. though, what's the focus? It is all about October and qualifying. Everyone remembers the loss against Mexico in 2011 qualifying process and the men's most recent loss against Trinidad. As a player, your mindset has to be day to day and taking care of business. We saw Julie Ertz at practice yesterday and we reminded her, hey, we're a year out from Paris. Are you so excited? Yeah. And she laughed and said, oh my God, her and the team are so focused on these games against China, the prep point into Tournament of Nations and qualifiers. She had no clue. Yeah. And tonight, the China will face a new challenge for them. They are going to face a new challenge and here's who's going to be out there for them Jill Ellis making five changes yeah and Becky Sauberin's going to actually tuck in more centrally so it's going to look more like a three back because Crystal Dunn's going to get so high up on that left flank and number 25 McCall Zerboni getting her first international start excited to see what she can bring to this squad Julie Ertz inserted back into that defensive mid position and Megan Rapinoe and Alex Morgan in peak form right now let's take a look at the other bench China also in a 4-3-3 today yeah and you know we don't know what to expect from this new coach job traditionally in the past have been very disciplined compact and sitting back on the U.S. So I'm excited to see what they bring out tonight. But some of you may remember number seven, Wang, who did score against us in uh, 2015 um, in Abby Wambach's farewell game. But number 10, Li Ying, is also a goal scorer. And the U.S. have to be careful with her tonight. One year away exactly from the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup in France. It all starts tonight, though. Stick around. Much more to come here from Rio Tinto Stadium. I said I'm sorry. I was eating a Milky Way. Hey, pass me that bug spray. At least it was SPF 50. Mmm, <sighs> sorry. The pregame show is sponsored by AT&T. It does have a certain ring to it, the USA and China, certainly in women's soccer terms. Derek Ray here with former U.S. national team midfield player Ali Wagner. Ali, you've played China on countless occasions. You know what it takes to beat them. Talk to us about the specific challenges of this assignment. You know, I think this team, compared to the team of old, is very different. This team is, a, from what we anticipate, although they do have a new coaches, that they're going to sit back in low blocks and be hard to break down. And historically, that's been something the U.S. has really had a challenge with. Think Sweden and the Olympics. I think from this U.S. side, they've got to keep up the tempo. They've got to move it side to side and make those channels internally bigger and get more runs out of midfield. Yes, Megan Rapinoe on that left flank can break open a defense at any given moment, but I think collectively you want to see this team not run out of ideas the way they did against Sweden. But it does evoke memories for those of us of a certain age. 1996, the Olympic final, Tiffany Milbrett. And then, how about 1999? Chastain will take it. Abby Wambach, her final match in her illustrious career. Played across, quick shot, and they score. China should celebrate. The unbeaten streak at home is over. Snapped at 104 in Abby Wambach's final game. Fajitas are sizzling at Golden Corral every night, just $13.99. Flame roll sirloin, seasoned shrimp, and spicy chicken. It's sizzling fajita night, just $13.99. Golden Corral, your choice rules. In a stadium, Rio Tinto, just outside Salt Lake City, where the U.S. women have a 100% record. They ready themselves for a meeting with China, first of two games against the Steel Roses in five days. With the focus for the USA firmly on the CONCACAF World Cup qualifying tournament to be held in October. Back-to-back free-scoring victories against Mexico last month. 
Netting 10 times in all. China already assured of a place in France at the FIFA Women's World Cup. 365 days from now. It is a hot June night here in the state of Utah as the teams make their entrance. team of the United States of America versus the national team of People's Republic of China. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats for the playing of the national anthem of the People's Republic of China. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and welcome singer-songwriter Mallory Kate to perform the Star Spangled Banner. Thank you. Mallory. U.S. National Anthem performed by Mallory Kate, regular performer here in Utah. So 56 previous USA-China encounters, plenty of epic clashes. China's nine wins, second most among all opponents, topped only by Norway's 19. Well, what about the thoughts of the USA coach, Jill Ellis? She's with Katie with him. Jill, it's always good to test yourself tactically. If China does come out more defensive-minded, how do you want to see your side break them down? Well, I think, you know, it's picking and choosing our moments. I mean, we've definitely got to have sort of maximum width there. Um, you know, we've really got to have good tempo on the ball and look for diagonal balls. I mean, we've got to move them and have confidence to play into their into their blocks and, and obviously then use the width. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a good challenge for us. And obviously, at the end of the day, it's about finishing our chances inside the 18. Appreciate your time. Thanks. No problem. Well, I sat down yesterday with Jia Xu Quan, high-profile figure in the Chinese game as a player. 
and as a coach in the men's Super League this is his first official match in charge of China's women's team he said he does want to make the side more dynamic and give younger players their opportunity in time not necessarily tonight though we hope to learn a lot from these two matches against the United States and the referee is Lucia Venegas, a teacher from Guadalajara in Mexico. She was the main official for the USA's 1-1 draw with France at the She Believes Cup in Harrison, New Jersey in March. Well, every game counts for the USA, and a lot has been gleaned already from the matches in 2018, Ali. I mean, compare that to 2017. The, the US has been on the front foot all of 2018, uh, they've settled into their system, more importantly, and they're starting to find partnerships and, and build relationships within the squad. But I had to go back to 2016 to find a team that really sat back against the U.S. That was Romania at the end of, of 2016. So we'll see if China does, in fact, sit in low blocks, how the U.S. operates today. You'll notice the U.S. players are wearing the rainbow numbers. All part of Pride Month, you saw the U.S. men perhaps last week doing that against the Republic of Ireland and the Irish followed suit. Three match show of solidarity and it's good to see Julie Ertz back in the side, her 60th international appearance back from injury. And a welcome addition. I mean, the U.S. is so deep in the center of the park and the fact that even McCall Gerboni is getting her first start tonight speaks a lot about the quality within the league. Julie Yurtz found her way into that role because of her, her position with Chicago Red Stars playing that spot for under Rory Dames. McCall Zerboni getting her call up because of her performance of North Carolina Courage. So you're seeing the, the results or the impact that this league is having on this U.S. team. Yeah, always a big part of the story. What's happening with the NWSL? So just about ready for the off. Suffice it to say, it's hot here in Salt Lake City this evening. Will be the US to kick off. The 7th of June 2017, exactly 12 months away from the opening game at the FIFA Women's World Cup in Paris, the City of Light. Tonight in Utah, it is a matter of the US trying to illuminate and entertain their fans against opponents who might have fallen down the pecking order in international terms, yet still command respect, China. The US will hope to be on the front foot for the most part. Abby Dahlkemper in the middle of the defence. Interesting that Becky Sauerbrunn has got the right back assignment. wonder if that's a portent of things to come or if it's specifically for this match tonight. I think it's more a situation of U.S. not having pure outside backs at their disposal with a lot of injuries going on with Kelly O'Hare, Casey Short, shifting things around. But let's remember that Becky Sauerbrunn typically plays on the left side of that center back partnership. New role for her, but good 1v1. China, we should stress, already guaranteed to be in the World Cup next year. Finished third at the recent Asian Cup. They were disappointed to go down to Japan the semi-final 3-1 the players actually had to all apologize on various social media platforms that's what really prompted the change of coach Bristol Dunn she likes to be let loose on that left hand side Alex Morgan was prowling in the center and the concession of the first corner of the match Ali just a good diagonal ball. Dill talked about it, pressing in behind it. That space is there. China was pushed higher. Crystal Dunn recognized it. And she's wide open on that flank, too. She's going to be the one to get in a more advanced position. And Alex Morgan threatening in between the center backs. Megan Rapino in terrific form for club and country. Close for the Seattle Reign. And it will be Rapino to deliver. It's a devilish one. Has it cleared away properly? The goalkeeper, Pung. Just managed to get a piece of that. That's an area where you suspect the US would hope to capitalize. We'll see. And the US is so good on set pieces, and they're going to want to keep reining these in on the goalkeeper. She's not so certain with her hands nor her feet. Continue to test her early and often. 
And with Julie Ertz coming back into the lineup in the service of Megan Rapino, that's a partnership that China has to be wary of. One of the senior figures on the side, Megan Rapino, and reveling in that role, you just feel. And the freedom, getting high on that back line and not having as many defensive responsibilities, especially with Crystal Dunn pushing up and having the freedom to rotate defensively high. She was talking to us about that yesterday, Ali, about how this 4-3-3 setup really plays to her strengths, allows her to get as high up as possible. And she's playing easily the best football of her career. So dynamic and confident taking on. Sansa Horan's threaded pass that time. Looking for Savannah McCaskill. Interesting inclusion in the starting 11, her first game from the outset for the USA. Has made an impact as a substitute before. I suppose it was only a matter of time, really, for McCaskill. And part of her role tonight is going to be to maintain that width up top. She's one of those disciplined players that can go out and execute a coach's game plan. And that's going to be with her to hold wide and hold that space to stretch out that back line when China is sitting in to create those channels in, inside. Made her debut against Denmark in the 5-1 victory at the start of this calendar year. Savannah McCaskill. Don't forget China prevailed in the last meeting of these two countries at the end of 2015. So the Superdome in New Orleans. What was Abby Wambach's final match for the USA? Rather spoiled the party. Not the strongest performance by the US that day. Their eyes are on something else. <laughs> As Rapino with Dunn to the outside. Just overcooking it, Megan Rapino. And Dunn available. Started with Lindsay Horan's pass. Megan Rapino always involved in the attacking action, it seems. You tend to think of China as a deep sitting team. They like the opposition to come at them. And they just don't really have the athleticism, Derek, or the pace to stretch the opponent. So what they do go in the counter moments, it's going to be with a few midfielders tying in, not direct. I told us earlier, 4-3-3. It looks a bit more like 4-5-1, doesn't it? We'll Without a come doubt. Back to that, yeah. yeah. Excellent distribution. Uh, once again for the USA. Ertz fed it out. And again is Julie Ertz. Sits deeper than the other midfield players for the US. Touched on by Morgan. How can China get into an attacking gear? Number seven on the ball. Wang Shuang. And here's where the U.S. has space in, beside, in behind to go direct. Didn't quite happen. Rapino in that position on the left for the USA. Mm -hmm. Early sparring stages here in Salt Lake City. Yeah, you could see her her motion to Julie Ertz was, I'm making that cutting run in behind. I'm not trying to pull wide. Tiona Davidson, only 19. Whenever you talk to Jill Ellis about Tiona Davidson, her eyes light up. You get the feeling she has the potential to be the cornerstone of that U.S. defense for quite some time. Just so impressive in her confidence coming in as a young player with this squad. Look at that ball. Yeah, that's what she's capable of. Now McCaskill cutting in. Savannah McCaskill. Not quite what she had in mind. Li Ying for China. Jang Ray. That's something that the new coach, Jia, would like China to improve on, the counter-attacking game. So to be altogether swifter, having watched tapes of previous matches. Used to be the 
man from Iceland, Sigurdur Ragnar Eljolfsson, who was in charge, but he was thanked for his services after the <laughs> defeat at the hands of Japan in the Asian Cup. Still qualified for the Women's World Cup. Let's get a quick word from Katie with him. Katie, what's on your mind down by the pitch? Well, early in this one so far, Derek, and all I've heard from Jill Ellis on the sideline is her focus on the back line, trying to have the U.S. lock China into their own defensive half. You've noticed early in this one, they've been well ahead of that center circle line at certain points, but she's called out to Becky Sauerbrunn and also Abby Dahlkemper multiple times, telling them to push up, step higher, and also challenge for any 50-50 ball out there to help try to lock them in. Interesting. Press and press high, I think, was a summary of the message from Jill Ellis in advance of this game. Ali? And look, if China's not going to threaten in behind on direct play, you can afford to push those players in. Can't squander turn ball over in the center of the park, however. Just a little bit sloppy by Sauerbrunn. Let's see if China can make waves in an attacking sense. It was Wang Shanshan. And that's the evolution for this U.S. side is to sense what the opposition is bringing. Yes, they had a scouting report coming in. You'd assume they'd know that they're not going to stretch you with pace and behind. So you can afford to, to commit a center back forward to be in a more aggressive position. And that can help create overloads on that back line. Here is Dal Kemper. And her U.S. debut here in Salt Lake City when last the U.S lined up here that was against switzerland october 2016. 4-0 win davidson Ertz. it's again happy to try to keep things ticking over in midfield Haran. It's going to run out of play. No real difficulties encountered by the Chinese defense. And that's where the U.S. has to be more patient. You saw them probing. I don't think it's early in the match. It's 10 minutes in as Jill Ellis looks on. But the U.S. isn't getting that counter movement, the flow better. Alex Morgan checks off the back line. No one's reestablishing pressure centrally. And that has to start to evolve if you can pull them out of shape. On that last ball, Lindsey Horan just squanders it. Gets wasteful. An interesting early test of the new laws of the game. The law changes come in 1st of June. If there are to be law changes. China tonight had 14 substitutes listed, but they were told to think again because under one of the new law changes, you can only have 12 listed on the bench. Six might come on. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by AT&T. It's great to have the pleasure of your company wherever you are this evening. Rio Tinto Stadium in Salt Lake City. US and China. It's an international fixture that always carries resonance in the women's game. Haran penalized for her intervention. The player who went down was Wong Chuong. So they are getting the nod in goal. Still get the feeling that the goalkeeping position is up for grabs where the US team is concerned. We'll get Ali's thoughts on that just in a second as Zhang Rei stands over this free kick, contemplating and then executing. And that will be comfortable for Nea. What do you think about the position between the posts, Sally. Everyone that stepped in has had some gaps in these, in these friendlies for the U.S., I think in the NWSL as well. Alyssa Nair's had a better spell recently with her club form, but it's certainly wide open, and you see Abby Smith coming in, getting a look. Casey Murphy from abroad coming in, getting some looks. So it is wide open. World Cup, if they do qualify still a year out, there's time for, for players to prove themselves. Ashlyn Harris might have been part of the equation tonight, but picked up a hip injury yesterday. Casey Murphy, you mentioned, who has been playing fantastically in France with Montpellier. 
Ashland Harris having to be content with the role of spectator. Well, 12 minutes in, how would you sum up what we've seen so far, Ali? Not clean yet. There isn't a lot of tempo or up tempo changes in the match to pull this or make this Chinese defense uncomfortable. A run too long and too strong. And it's also just playing right into the flow of the defense there. Yes, Alex Morgan has the pace to get on the end of service like that, but you want to see the U.S. start to break China down through through their thought process and the, uh, the communal movement. Effective pressing just then from Morgan, trying to put the wind up. Hung in goal. Slide fly going up just as that was developing anyway. Morgan four goals in the last two matches those two games against Mexico could do no wrong and starting to find her form with her club team as well with the Orlando pride this came off Morgan a bit of illegal discomforting there from Nicole Zaboni but I think Alex Morgan tonight, I know it's still early, is look, has been left isolated. Megan Rapino is staying wide, McCaskill's staying wide, and you'd like to see then center mids get underneath Alex Morgan to play off of her. Or more ideally, Megan Rapino filtering inside and allowing Dunn to, to be the one to establish the width high and wide. Moran showing for it. Sarah Brun certainly heard the footsteps of Wang Shuang. Just Peters out for the USA. Let's talk more about the attacking side of the game for the USA with Casey Witham. Casey. Derek Alley just mentioned Alex Morgan being a little isolated so far in this one. Everything that I've heard from Jill Ellis, she recently got Savannah McCatskill's attention over here on this near side, talking to her about her movement, specifically telling her, I want to see you win all of the corners for us, but specifically get out there and work on your diagonal runs. Yeah, and with her cutting in, I'm She's one of those players that can play a 10. Yes, she could be a striker, but she's more nuanced in her movement, and she's just kind of been, I think, a bit stoic in her positioning and staying wide. Should stress no Mallory Pugh tonight for the USA. Does give others an opportunity, in this case, McCaskill from the start. And that front three with Pew and Morgan and Rapino was just flying, so it's unfortunate that she picked up a knock. Here is McCaskill. It's again just over hit in the general direction of Haran. But even if she connects that pass, Derek, I, Lindsay Haran is isolated in that situation. They don't have numbers over here. I don't think China are entitled to feel fairly happy the way this match has started pretty comfortable pretty much in front of them yeah, especially not knowing what to expect against this u.s side and with the co new coach at the helm playing in a different system this is a team that usually plays in a 4-4-2 and they're in a 4-3-3 matching up in the center of the park and morgan releasing rapino trying to go around the outside keeping tabs on rapino was low ja Huey. Trying to make a bit of headway through Li Ying. Rapino. You can't really take your eyes off Rapino as an opposing defender, not even for a fleeting moment. Dal Kemper. And again, the width provided by McCaskill. Sauerbrunn. Now Ertz. Simple but effective pass to Horan. Zaboni in a useful looking position as they try to. Indulge in a bit of pressing again here, the USA. Well, that's fantastic. Well, it looked like fantastic play by Zaboni, but she hasn't got away with it. You've got to admire the intention. And that's so much better from the US because the offensive look was good, but they also had the defensive numbers because they did switch it and they were creating an overload on the side, and that allowed them to press in and not allow China to get out. 
Yes, they give away the opportunity with the free kick, but a better look. Ren's pass for China. We've been able to get the right back forward too often. Low. Wang Shan Shan can certainly do damage. 28 year old made her debut for China back in March 2012 against Germany. And can they tee something up here? Wang Shuang. Joy. Up against Sauerbrunn. Haran. And Sauerbrunn once more. 33 yesterday. Matthew Sauerbrunn. It's been a fun partner or matchup to watch between Sauerbrunn and Wong there. They're not going to see plenty of each other, I think, Ali. Ren. And that will be Alyssa Nayer's ball. A black score sheet. Rio Tinto Stadium. Julie Ertz. Had a good chat with her yesterday. Raring to go again. Delighted to be back with the U.S. women's national team. Caskill. Just outnumbered there. Outthought as well. Still trying to force a mistake. In this case from Zhang Ray. Liu Shanshan, the left back there. Wearing the number two shirt for China. 26 year old. In the footsteps of her father, who was a professional player in China. And Bristol done. And that's what the US fans wanted to see. Trying to pull it back. And covering up is Bang. Rapino had made the dash into the centre. And that's what Dunn can bring to the attack, even though she's nominally a defender. And this all started with her actually stepping up and winning it in midfield. And then the combination with Morgan and Dunn down that flank. Rapino trying to get inside to that near post. Beats her player, gets her head up and tries to slot it in there. But well off her line is Pong. But Derek, that's all with Crystal Dunn stepping hard into midfield, winning that initial ball. Crystal Dunn, the NWSL MVP back in 2015. An MVP as a, a front runner because she was scoring goals all over the place. So versatile. See what the U.S. can conjure here. Headed away by Wu Haiyan, the captain of China. She was an injury doubt. We spoke to the coach yesterday. Jia wasn't entirely sure if she was going to make it, but she was given the vote of confidence. Julie Ertz for the USA. Sarah Brun elects to play it to McCaskill. Keep it alive, Ertz and Morgan. Shuffling for space. China defending en masse pretty effectively. Yeah, but the U.S. has five players or four players back with marking one Chinese player. You got to get the rotation up and put more pressure and stretch that Chinese defense out. They're not creating the overloads. They're being very conserved in their positioning defensively. The U.S. that is. It's all part of a learning experience for this U.S. team. Nobody wants to get ahead of themselves. But when it comes to the World Cup, John Alice was talking to us about this yesterday. This is the sort of game that you might get in the knockout stages. It's a pretty savvy side. Wang Shuang for China. As they circulate the ball, so Ren getting into position and they are. Well, she got there. Excellent release it was by Nair, and now Rapino and Morgan trying to get in behind the defence, but the rescuing challenge there from Wu for China, that was crucial. And the two best looks, that and the previous play with Dunn, go figure in when China's pushed out and in a transition moment when the U.S. can pick it off and spring. It hasn't been in their tactical approach when they're trying to break China down. Oftentimes, that could be the case in these moments, in these types of matches, excuse me. Shuang, once again, Sandrum was there now. It's painful. 
Li Ying together with Julie Ertz. Just come back from injury. This is what happened, Ali. And Sauerbrunn goes to ground, and then it's challenge coming in from behind. Ertz sees it, I think, at the last second. Just cleans out both legs of Ertz. Well, she's back on her feet. That's the good news. She's usually the, the disher out of those moments. The brawn in the midfield. I suspect she'll remember that particular moment and who the perpetrator was. Sauerbrunn and now Ertz on the ball for the USA. McCaskill. The idea was to spring Haran on the Chinese defence. Neat and tidy when in possession, China. Still toothless in their attack. Yeah. Well, they don't try too many ambitious passes. They've given it away here. That was Yao Wei. A 20-year-old who's been drafted into the squad for the first time. Zaboni. And challenged. McCall Zaboni. That was the hashtag, wasn't it? The call-up <laughs> we saw on social media. And well deserved. Even on that run there, you saw her just glide across her defender to cut off any retreat. Rapino. Now Ertz. And it was over vigorous. She knows it. Julie Ertz. And Jill Ellis. Almost 25 minutes in. So many interesting examinations coming up for the USA, the Tournament of Nations. After this, featuring three of the best teams in the world, Japan, Australia and Brazil, three different venues here in the United States. But really, all they're talking about in the background, Ali, is that CONCACAF qualifying tournament in October. And after what happened to the U.S. men, nobody is taking <laughs> anything for granted. Why do you have to bring that up, Derek? <laughs> Just being honest. <laughs> now here's Haran, veering into position. Behind it goes for the corner. Spinning off Wu. Better from Haran. And you see Morgan just posted up there, gets the run off of her with Lindsay Haran. Good communication there. Lindsay Horan will strike from anywhere. It's going to be the outswinger from Rapino. She pick out one of the aerial targets. Trying to get that to curve. Ended up popping the outswinger. And we spoke about the FIFA Women's World Cup. Teams who are guaranteed to be there already. Ali? France, Australia, Brazil, I mean, Japan. Of course, they jump out at you, China. We'll see what they can do or produce with this new coach at the helm. But that's a strong, a strong sampling already in. Thailand getting their second bid. European qualification still in progress. Number of games today or tomorrow and the early part of next week. This international window the women's game. She does hold things together at the back, Wu. Quite the battle between Wu Haiyan and Alex Morgan. Another set piece opportunity here for Rapino. Raptors in there making the late run. Quite what Rapino had in mind, but still alive here for the USA. Flax got up though, offside, and it grinds to a halt. Nil nil here in Salt Lake City. Say it really is a fantastic venue. This my first time actually inside Rio Tinto Stadium. 
capacity of around 20,000. Can be expanded to 25,000 for concerts. The likes of Paul McCartney, Kiss, Journey and Neil Diamond have all performed here. Only you would know that. <laughs> From Cracklin Rosie to the Steel Roses. In this game, anyway. Now let's see if China can ask questions of Nair. Well, the shot has gone just that little bit wide off the boot of Wang Shuang. So often they get into advanced positions. Yeah, but they're still releasing it around the 18, and that's what the U.S. can expect. Have to step hard in those moments. Just a reminder that in seven days, the 2018 FIFA World Cup is coming to Fox and FS1. Every match live and over 300 hours of coverage. The world's biggest sporting event begins June 14th on Fox and FS1. Wu again, just making sure that nothing untoward happened against Morgan. And I must say, going back to the subject of the World Cup, Ali, looking forward to the pleasure of your company on a daily basis. Don't be so sure about <laughs> that, Derek. <laughs> well, the opposite might actually apply as well, so <laughs> just be mindful no, of that. It's going to be a good run, a busy run. Yep, certainly is. But there's nothing quite like it. And a year exactly away from the start of the FIFA Women's World Cup. And with qualification looming, Derek, you talked about how important today's match is with a, a team that likes to sit deep and play on the break. That's more than likely the, the type of opponent the U.S. is going to face in CONCACAF qualifying. He's going to look to absorb pressure. It's done. Still going, Crystal Dunn. Oh, Alex Morgan attempting the flick. Excellent teamwork. First Dunn, and then Morgan looked to finish it off. And chances coming from that left side with Dunn getting there. Alex Morgan making the near post run, and that was really the only option that Crystal Dunn had. She draws three defenders with her, Alex Morgan, that is. No one else was coming in behind to provide the depth in the box. Just think the U.S. has looked pretty disjointed. I know you've got a new center mid with McCall Zerboni. You've got a new starter, McCaskill, on this right flank. I think they've looked disjointed between midfield into that front line. Rapino, natural runner with a ball at her feet. Well, she's 1v2 and cover support coming in slow behind. Almost a languid style, China. Very deliberate. Wu across the defence. Lin, a central defensive partner. Lin Yu Ying. Wang Shuang protecting the ball on this left hand side for the Chinese. Back in play by Sauerbrunn, but well, they couldn't keep the ball. That was Lindsay Horan. Pressure from China, and then it's given away by Wang Shuang. Pino Ertz. Here's Davidson. Stanford Cardinal. But even when they were finding her early on, Derek, I just don't think they were doing her any favors. I know it's her first start, but she was isolated far too often, and that's not really going to be her, her skill set is to take players 1v3. She needs players around her to combine. That's where the U.S. has to have better recognition that it's not on in this flank and to change it out the other side. Crystal Dunn been more bright in the attack. Storming it again was Zerboni. That's very much her style. Doesn't like to put the brakes on. Effective ball winning by Ertz. Now Rapino. Quick switch towards Morgan. Cover there for China. Won five of the last six for the Chinese. It's not a bad idea by Dunn. It's McCaskill heading it down. And, well, the decision does go the way of the U.S. Haran lining up the shots. Corner is the outcome. 
This is a better diagonal ball played in behind McCaskill than threatening. Haran coming in underneath. She's really good at reading that long diagonal pass and running off of it, Haran. Does have goals in her game, usually, Lindsay Haran. Particularly at club level. Rapino. Just took off a little bit. Davidson. Sarah Brunn for the USA. Done. Rapino finds herself on the right hand side for once. Juliards. She was being hounded every step of the way there. By Yao Wei, keen to make an impact. Her first appearance for China. The challenge wasn't deemed illegal as it came in, and now counter attacking possibilities for China. Wang Shuang at the hub of most things creative, and Lee steadying herself, and Naya takes charge. Wow, Lee Ying. Normally lethal, seven goals in her last five matches for China. But Maya, right place, right time. And he thought she was opening her body up, she was going to bend that far post, but Nair quick to the ground on that. One pass beat three back players for the U.S. and took them out. And now the U.S. to go into the passing routine once more. And you can just see how many players they have sitting low with, with McCall and Ertz sitting deep. Now Haran pulls out. There's just not enough pressure on that back line. And if you're going to do that, then you've got to get late runs out of mid. Rapino. Dunn pops up on the right this time. Splendid ball right across the face of goal. Well, they have to be content with the corner. McCaskill in the middle. They switched positions there. Meanwhile, at the other end. This was China on the break, and Wong just... Holds it enough to draw two defenders, and the timing is exactly right. With Lee slipping off that back shoulder, should have finished from there. Rapino again tasked with taking the corner. Plenty of movement inside the area. Now, who wants it? A bit of a scramble. So Boney was close to the ball. This is a look at the, the chance that led to the U.S. corner. Rapino pulling off that back line, and it's done again. who springs it. This time, the U.S. gets two runners. Alex Morton coming near, and then McCaskill far, and then McCall Zerboni. We've seen her score like that in the NWSL. That one just catches her. A little flurry of activity in the last couple of minutes. But still, it is nil-nil. Less than 10 minutes to go to halftime. As the road to France continues for the U.S. women's national team. Done. Too much on it for the liking of Haran. As we said, victorious on the last visit to the USA when they defeated them in New Orleans. Remember, they met in the Women's World Cup in the knockout stages. And Derek, I wasn't sure if it was just a, a factor from the corner being played out, but Dunn has in fact shifted into the right back spot, more than likely to deal with Wong because she was getting the better of Becky Sauerbrunn and Tierna Davidson has gone to an outside back role. See if she can play make from that position. Interesting shuffling around of personnel, Ali. Now, see if Zerboni can feed Rapino side it was anyway. Yeah, Donna right back now as we look at the defence. Dal Kemper, the right centre back, as you said, Sarbrun left of her, and then Davidson left back. You know, playing high up the pitch as she likes to do. Effective in the air, Lindsay Horan certainly had the beating of Lee Ying. McCaskill, Ertz behind her, 
Zaboni. Sauerbrunn out for Davidson. And with the U.S.'s center of midfield being so flat, I just think they're missing that connection high underneath Alex Morgan. You see how flat they are across the pitch. Lindsay Horan. Worked something with Savannah McCaskill. Did come off for the USA. Ertz and Morgan and Horan and Zerboni. Davidson, will she get there? There's the answer. She does. Corner kick chiseled out of that. Good stuff from the USA. And that is better with the players pulling off the back line and playing in the seam at least. Able to get themselves on the half turn, change the point. A lot more fluent that time. And now Rapino surveying the scene. Megan Rapino away to the back post where McCaskill was stationed. Something Megan Rapino does very well, Ali. Varies those corners. You never quite know what's going to come over. <laughs> no, but most of her service tonight has been whipped in towards the goal frame. More runners have to get across and, and expect that one to die. Rapino. Referee intervening. A reminder coming up at halftime, sponsored by AT&T. We'll have all your first-half highlights and analysis. We'll talk the road to France for the USA. So try to set something up here. Once again, Rapino. China have acquitted themselves pretty well against the best team in the world. Caskill, that's offside, done. Like the run too early. Just over five minutes left in the first half. How would you quantify what we've seen up to this point, Ali, here in Salt Lake City? I really do think it's looked disjointed in the attack, and there, I go back to the flat midfield. You can see McCall Zerboni, Julie Yurtz, and Lindsey Hiran playing narrow and tight defensively, and I don't know when they're springing into offense if they're getting enough penetration underneath because Yao of, of China is sitting in that pocket of space and winning a lot of entry passes. But as with anything with the U.S., as the game goes on, you see they start to settle in, start to wear the opponent down, and those spaces become bigger and bigger. Jill Ellis will shortly be able to address her charges. Interesting to see if we have any half-time substitutions to take note of. I'd imagine one or two, certainly. Players who need a bit of game time. And to manage minutes. I mean, it is at altitude here, and they're in the middle of their NWSL season with a lot of midweek games. So right now, we talk about qualifying. Part of tonight's match is just escaping with this group healthy. Julie Ertz working her minutes back up. Sonea, Stratford, Connecticut. Well, chances few and far between for the USA. That's something they'll certainly hope to change. But China, as ever, pretty obdurate in this game. Difficult to get past. They've been stronger than I anticipated, that's for sure, Derek. Mm. They've fallen down the world rankings in recent years. To go back 15, 20 years, you'd be talking about China, the USA, and Norway, really, as the best three countries. Germany, probably, in the argument as well. Done. And stabbed behind for the corner, this time by Lin for China. She hasn't had too much to do, Pang, really, has she? A couple of interventions, but. A whole lot. Let's see if Rapino and company can test her here. But half time approaching in Salt Lake City. 
Nothing wrong with the idea as Morgan tried to get on the end of that corner from Rapino. Done. Floating in. It's a good deflection on the way through to Pang, but quick thinking by the goalkeeper. Nil-nil, it remains. And this is off the quick restart by Megan Rapino into Dunn, and Dunn has just created so many problems. Yes, that deflection proves fortuitous for Pong, but Dunn has been one of the bright spots for this U.S. in the attack. Spoke about obstinacy from China. That was, of course, what we saw from them in the Women's World Cup, the quarterfinal stage, when it was just 1-0 for the United States when all was said and done. They're trying to come away with the ball again here, China. Only sporadic counter-attacks, but enough to keep the US defenders on their toes. Ren Guixin, 29-year-old midfield player. They have a thriving domestic league. A bit of money being spent to bring in overseas players as well. Dalian, they side, everybody else tries to take down. Champions three years running. Here's Rapino. And Foxing Lin. Really giving her the runaround. Lovely skill. Morgan was again waiting inside the box, but that was down to Megan Rapino. And just a little showing off at the end here going around and then trying to find Morgan at that near post. We've seen Alex Morgan make that run so often tonight. Morgan readies herself for another Rapino corner. Just unable to hit the target, Alex Morgan. Those outswingers are, are proving more dangerous for the U.S. than the ones that are curling in from Megan Rapino. What do you think Joe Ellis will be stressing in a halftime team talk, Ali? I think more connection to that front line and changing the point, going up tempo more often. There is space in the flanks to get around the edge if the U.S. is quick in and playing those diagonals. And I just, I would like to see more movement out of that midfield, more darting runs. She's on the wars again, Julie Ertz. Never afraid of that, though. That will be that for the first half here at Rio Tinto Stadium. The USA unable to trouble the Chinese defense too often. They have carried the game to the opposition, but just occasional counter-attacks from China, meaning that the US cannot get overconfident about this. They have work to do without any shadow of a doubt. Half-time analysis to come. This international stands at nil-nil. Half time is sponsored by AT&T. And welcome back to Salt Lake City. Derek Ray and Ali Wagner. Nil-nil, the United States and China in this international friendly. The story so far, Ali, frustration for the USA. Yeah, they've struggled to break down this low block of China. You can see China filters back, gets players behind. The US really running out of ideas when they're attacking centrally, and they haven't had great shape to break them down. This is one instance where they find Dunn in open space. That's where one of the areas they've had success is down the flank with Crystal Dunn in particular. I mean, she takes three players on, but it closes down her own gap. Alex Morgan you can only make that near post run, and there's really not a cutback ball to be had for the U.S. in that moment. China didn't pose many challenges for the U.S. except this one, and that's when Pong gets free and tries to open up. I mean, she has a savviness to cut it back. It has a listen air, but listen air gets to ground quick and makes a big save in that counter-attack, and then the U.S. created a few moments off of corners being whipped in. That one falls to the feet of Zerboni. She can't connect on it well. And then it's Rapino. She's been one of the bright spots as well for the U.S. She says, oh, I'll beat you once, and by the way, I'll beat you twice. <laughs> Alex Morgan at that near post again, just hunting it down. Well, a lot more to talk about, and we'll hear from Katie Witham and Leslie Osborne after this next break, continuing along the road to France. Now 
Yesterday, from Red Square in Moscow, they debuted the mascot for the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup. You can see her running around right there. That is Eddie. She will be in France next year. So will we. All of your coverage live on FS1. Welcome back to the Halftime Show presented by at and I'm Katie Witham alongside Leslie Osborne. We are scoreless after 45 minutes of action between the defending World Cup champion, the United States, and China. Leslie, eight nations have already qualified for next year's World Cup in France. More than half of those teams the U.S. will face on their schedule. Take me through what it's like as a player. What are these next 12 months like? Well, as a player, you're so extremely excited to reach that dream of making a World Cup team, but you have to stay present. You have to look at this team collectively and take each friendly and each tournament as a measurement stick to see where this team is at. The Tournament of Nations is an opportunity, a home soil tournament playing against three of the top 10 teams teams in the world that will give the U.S. a good chance to see what they need to do but as a player you want to stay healthy and with all the injuries coming in and out of this team you have to be ready and it's also working on the chemistry of this team and when players do come back in that it, it that it does go well so as a player you're so excited but you have to stay present and qualify and so it's really all about October well and it, it is all about October you saw on the schedule there the women's world cup qualifying CONCACAF October 4th through the 17th the road to France goes through that stick around much more to come from Rio Tinto after this. Here's to Pizza Hut. Here's to $7.99 large two-topping pizzas. And to our delivery captains, double-checking your order before it hits the road so you get exactly what you want. Here's to all the ways. No one out pizzas the hut. In life, you either feed on Jack Link's jerky, a protein snack made with 100% beef, and you run with Sasquatch? <laughs> or you run from Sasquatch? Half time is sponsored by AT&T. And the score here is the USA nil, China nil, as the US continue to get ready for World Cup qualifying. A big announcement made this week in US soccer circles. Hey, I'm sorry I'm late. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry I meant to be here for the surprise. I'm so happy to be here because I have some wonderful news to tell you. You're a gift and you're a soccer legend in this country and you deserve a place in this class for the 2018 National Soccer Hall of Fame and I am so happy I get to present that to you. Could there be anyone more deserving than Tiffany Milbrett inducted into the National Soccer Hall of Fame? Alec, you played with her. My question is, what took so long? <laughs> yeah, what did take so long? I mean, a big sigh of relief with her getting that. I mean, she was, in my opinion, the best front runner that I was able to play with. Her runs were so smart and nuanced, and I don't think she got the credit she ever deserved. Substitution time in this game, by the way. A couple of new players for the USA in this half. Sofia Huerta and Samantha Mewis. Mewis back from injury. Interesting to see how she fares. In the second half run out, the North Carolina Courage player. Grew up on the south shore of Massachusetts. Just confirming a change for China as well. Wang Shanshang has got off. With Yang Li taking her place. Expect quite a few more personnel changes along the way. That's how it goes in international friendlies. But this is the first of two games in five days between the USA and China. They'll lock horns again in Cleveland on Tuesday. Information that Sam Mewis is on. And with where to coming on, McCaskill's off, Dunn's been popped up into that front line to provide more of an offensive spark than McCaskill was able to provide in that first half. Yeah, Lindsay Horan, Savannah McCaskill no longer part of the equation for the USA. See that 
Benigas sounding the second half into action with China. Defending that goal away to our left. It's probably the best way to put it because they were predominantly in defensive mode, did occasionally carry a threat. There's not enough imagination from the US who dominated in possession terms. And it's still Davidson at left back with Sauerbrunn in the middle of the defence alley. Dahl Kemper didn't quite go to plan. Katie Witham had a chance to catch up with Jill Ellis during the break. Katie? The head coach was very honest coming out of the locker room. Derek here at the half. She told me collective, the collective effort defensively was just not good enough. Her message was we have to be more proactive and defensive minded. We have to commit to our regains out there. But offensively, she said we have to continue to move the ball, take more risks in passing. Also, make sure we have wide options and depth. But timing is everything in terms of that final pass and getting on the end of one. So both sides of the ball were subpar, basically. And I think fair statement. I mean, this is a U.S. squad that should be dynamic in their attack. We know they always pride themselves on their defensive high pressure. But China is very good at solving pressure. They're technical. They can play out of tight spaces. So that may be something to keep an eye on. If the U.S. does ratchet it up, does that change anything in terms of where the U.S. regains it? Davidson's pass. Chase back there. Del Kemper, Huerta, over there on the right for the U.S. Four previous matches for the U.S.A. here at Rio Tinto, four previous victories. Another game prior to the stadium being opened at Rice Eccles Stadium. It was against Ireland. The U.S. on, Haran off. Lindsay Haran, a spectator the rest of the way. Ertz did well. So keep the ball moving. Davidson for Rapino. Morgan waiting in the middle. Done in the thick of things too. Ertz and Morgan not quite. So trying to take the game to China. They did bring on Yang Li for Wang Shan Shan. An interesting Derek with Haran going off. It looks as though Sam Hughes is actually going into that 10 role where normally should be more of an eight. McCall sitting as a six. Julie Ertz popping into the eight. More than likely to get some of those late runs out of midfield. She's so good at getting on the end of service. The other Chinese change, Li Dangyang, on for Liu Shanshan. Here's Wu. And a touch here for Li, the player we just referenced. Wasn't the most confident of touches. Quite warmed up. U.S. pressure will do that to you. <laughs> well, that has been part of the build-up story for the U.S. Trying to apply as much pressure as possible. Certainly, what Jill Ellis has wanted to see tonight. U.S. gets it again. Get over hit. In the squad after a knee injury. A member of the US under 17s came second at the FIFA World Championship in 2008. And really stormed onto the senior team when she came in as a sub. She was scoring every match in her first few caps and then found herself playing in a deeper role. Be interesting to see how she does higher up on the pitch. You can see she's sitting in a nice pocket of space right now. This is Mewis. Davidson was crying out for the ball to be played to her. Opted for the shorter pass to Sauerbrunn. And now Dahlkemper. Passing this time from China. From the person of Ren Guaisin. Davidson. Ertz. Organizing in that deep midfield position. So Boney with the switch out to the right hand side. Dunn continues her pursuit of the ball. 
cut away by Punk. Where does touch didn't come off, but that was better from the U.S. getting it to that wide space with Dunn pulling off and the Huerta reestablishing that, that pressure in behind. Sophia Huerta, the player who officially, through FIFA, changed her allegiance. Presented Mexico, was able to switch to the USA, was happy to do so. And in Boise, Idaho, Davidson asking a lot of Tiona Davidson to get there. Five minutes into the second half, and it remains nil-nil in this international friendly, the USA and China. China who've already stamped their ticket for the World Cup. The USA hoping to do so in October. Interesting tournament set up. Two groups of four. The US will be playing their group matches in Kerry, North Carolina. So Bernie, and it does work its way towards Huerta. Morgan. The ball under control, but having to go back the way. Davidson composed on the ball. Rapino. So Boney to bustle her way through. And maybe the Chinese counter attack again. Wang Shuong. And that was cleverly done. She is there to gather Nea. Sufficient awareness. Knew that Li Ying was making that run. Now here's Rapino. Does she have the legs? Not quite. Spoke about the Tournament of Nations, which is coming up July and August. All the US matches here on FS1. Japan, Australia, and Brazil. Pretty decent competition there, Ali. Yeah, and teams that are going to play much differently from this Chinese team. Those are teams that will try to boss the game and take it to the US. So that's why this match tonight, this series, is really important for the US squad to try to figure it out. Games to be played in Kansas City, East Hartford, Connecticut, Bridgeview, Illinois. It's all part of the process of getting ready for the CONCACAF World Cup qualifying tournament. USA would certainly be favorites going into that. Canada and Mexico will be forces to be reckoned with as well. Huerta and Dunn just strayed. And I'm still left perplexed as to why the U.S. isn't rotating, committing more numbers forward against this Chinese team. Well, it has been an exercise in patience for all concerned. I'm sure for Jill Ellis, I'm sure for the U.S. fans watching. Let's see if they can ratchet things up a notch or two. Shang Rei controlling the ball there for China. And we've seen it so many times with this U.S. team that maybe they're not playing with a, a certain amount of flow or effervescent that you'd want to see, but they get the result, they get goals, so they're very capable of winning in matches like this, the way they're going about it today. But I think for the U.S. as they continue to go forward, if they do in fact qualify it when they get to the World Cup, is to be able to control a, a, a game like this and break the opponent down instead of just waiting for one little moment, one air by the opponent. Here's an overlap. It's Lee Tanyang, the substitute. They're trying to stretch the USA defense, in particular Sabra. Better from China, certainly. That was one of the first times we've seen China get numbers forwards themselves. They had runners in the box on that service. Wang Shuang. Trusted with the corner. The first. Taking it short to Jiang. 
fed in there, but to great effect by Ren Guaysin. Gonna watch with interest to see what China do between now and the Women's World Cup because having spoken to Jia, the coach, gave indications that he does want to alter the personnel, feels they need to be younger. It's a pretty young side we saw from China at the last World Cup. Done. China in build-up mode again, but just like that, they've given it away. And scope for Crystal Dunn. So make the run, the free kick has been given in her favour. We see that Venegas right up with play. Dunn's been so positive tonight, Derek, in her play. First as an outside back, and now moving to that front line. She's one of the players with impetus to take on tonight and go at these defenders. You think she's happier playing in that higher position, Ali, as opposed to... Absolutely, she's, yeah. but she also just wants one role and to stick with it yeah. and to master. But you might not get that with this US side. Here's Rapino. Oh, useful one, and there is the breakthrough. Alex Morgan, who else? To the delight of the fans here in Salt Lake City. The opener for the USA. The wait is over. Morgan's goal. And yes, it's Morgan's goal, but it's about this service as well. Rapino just bends it in behind. Alex Morgan beats her player. I mean, she's hovering all over her from the backside. And Rapino whips it and dips it down. Pong is glued to her line, doesn't come off, hoping her defender makes a play, and rifles that one by. And goal number 86 in international terms for Alex Morgan. China finally come unstuck. Well, let's see what sort of approach that elicits from the Chinese now. Well, they'll have suited them, suited their style of play. Will they open up a bit more? And this all came off of a done foul. Rapino steps up to it. Set piece artist she is. And then Alex Morgan reads it, times it well. Quality finish as well. Doubles in the two matches against Mexico for Alex Morgan. And now on target here against China. See if that allows the USA to, if you like, exhale and play the football. And perhaps get a, an injection of pace into the match. As methodical as it's been by the US, after goals, they usually go a little up tempo more, and that suits their style. Lin. Having to cover up with Zhang Rei in front of the defense for China. Davidson. Sauerbrunn. This is Dal Kemper. Intelligent use of the ball. Awareness by Werther over there. And do they have another one in the future? Well, it's Rapino, and she's blazed it over. Starting to flow now, though. Wert has been really eager on that far flank, getting high. Here she takes her player on, slips it through, makes her, gets her head up to play that slot ball back. Dunn gets the first look at it, doesn't connect, and then the depth that runs by Megan Rapino to follow up and get a look. That's brighter by the U.S. In that play, they had five players on the back line of China. That's really difficult to absorb for a back line of four. A very clever work by Huerta. Confident player. 25-year-old of the Chicago Red Stars. In there by Lewis. Here's Rapino. Succeeded in keeping it in. She goes to work again here, Megan Rapino. Morgan. 
Just to have such a wonderful understanding. Hanging ball there and done. But it seemed to take an eternity to come down. And Don almost capitalised. Pretty awkward play by the U.S. Alex Morgan tries to get around. It doesn't connect well. And this one drops in. Pong unsure as she's coming off that line. And it was by Ertz for the USA. She has it again here, Julie Ertz, under a bit of pressure from Li Ying. Now Rapino. Room to Rome for Rapino. And it comes to Yang Li. Came on at the start of the second half for China. But Huerta. Not any fuss at all. Zerboni. We get to that deeper position, Alex Morgan, to help out on the build up front. Sauerbrunn directing it to Davidson. Rapino, she was being very closely watched by Zhang Rei. And you wonder if Wang Shuang of China has been closely watched by any of these NWSL coaches. She's having herself a nice match today. Megan Rapino continues to dazzle for the U.S. More on Megan Rapino from Katie Witham. Well, Derek Alley, she's been in quite the form of run lately. When we asked her yesterday what she's most proud of, she talked about her consistency and her ability to be dangerous all the time. But she said where she's improved the most is in front of goal. She talked about playing higher both with club and with country and constantly thinking about how she can make the players around her better and also being in a good position where she can score more. She even said, hey, my goal, I try to score a goal every single game. I loved that. She's always a very interesting person to interview, to listen to. She's not short of an opinion either, which we like. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> Want more of her? Let's get her on the set. Yeah. She was the architect of the goal. The lone goal so far, scored by Alex Morgan for the USA. It's mistimed at that time, Sauerbrunn. She goes in again. It's losing out to Wang Shuang. Ertz. So Boney for the U.S. It's gobbled up by China. It's low on the left. The referee, we see that Benegas intervenes. China looking for a bit of rhythm in this second half. And they seem more proactive in their approach in this second half, Derek. Ray. It was over everyone, including Yang Li. Goal kick, it is. Certainly has forced a rethink from China. The goal conceded, the goal scored by Alex Morgan. But I think they were starting to play on the front foot when the second half kicked off, not just because they did concede. China. Pushing more numbers forward. Rapino. And ball. She knew it. <laughs> Good to see three US players coming on. Next stoppage in play. Carly Lloyd, Kristen Press, and Ali Long have all readied themselves for action. Continues for now. Mewis. Dull Kemper. How many times have we seen that ball by Dull Kemper floating over to this side? She likes playing those diagonals. It suits Tierna Davidson. It suits Rapino well. Just hasn't connected with consistency tonight. So here we are. The changes. And Carly Lloyd will come on for Megan Rapino. 
Yeah, one high-profile player for another. Megan Rapino, perhaps the best of them in terms of the starters. Warm applause for Rapino and, of course, for Carly Lloyd, who now wears the armband. On the shift, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out with Carly Lloyd coming on for Rapino, who had herself another fine night. Don Kemper has gone off. Kristen Press taking her place. Julie Ertz giving 65 minutes to the cause. Kristen Press making an appearance, as we said. And the utility player, Crystal Dunn, shifts into a back into the left back wall. Just now played left back, right back, and right wing in a matter of about 66 minutes. And they long on the pitch, too. Immediately getting involved. Not afraid to put herself about on the pitch. As we approach the midway point of this second half. So Carly does go into that nine roll at the spearhead of that front three with Alex Morgan now shifting off left. Slowed it down by Long for the USA. It's Davidson. Back the way goes Sauerbrunn. Reserve goalkeeper tonight, reserve to Alyssa Nea is Abby Smith of the Utah Royals. China's turn to go to the bench here. It's going to be Yan Xinxin. Taking the place of Ren Gui Xin. He operates in midfield. Yan Xinxin. Here's Wu. And back to Wu. Leader at the back. Just got themselves into trouble. And the pressure was on from Morgan. Sauerbrunn. And Crystal Dunn for the USA. Being hassled by Yan, the fresh player for China. Masanea in her 28th international appearance. Here's Carly Lloyd. I saw what she was trying, and it very nearly came off for her. Support of the person of Kristen Press. She's been playing her. Football in Sweden. It's only just got off a plane a couple of days ago. Perhaps why she didn't start this game tonight. Wasn't really considered for a starting role. Sweden assignment for now over. Back playing for Upperberg Göteborg. Been there before a few years ago. Lloyd, and she usually is on the pitch to make statements. And with her playing in that nine role, I think we saw in the second half Alex Morgan doing a nice job back to pressure and being an outlet for the U.S. to bounce play off of. Riley Lloyd can do the same, but probably one of the best players on this U.S. team to get on the end of service in the box. It'll be interesting to see if, if this is a role that she takes on for this U.S. squad as they head into qualifying, and then if they do, in fact, qualify into the World Cup, where is she best for this team? Definitely higher up the pitch and close to goal. Finally hit that magic 100 number against Mexico. Oh, 
to be careful there, Ali Long. Swarm of Chinese players around her. And that will certainly be a free kick. It's gone against Wu. She was actually sent off playing against the Philippines at the Asian Cup earlier this year. 3 0 win, but the red card anyway. Going to suspension. This is what happened here. Yep, two players closing in on Alex Morgan, and you can see from behind. Nasty challenge there by Wu. A little pause here while treatment is administered to Morgan. Words of wisdom from Jill Ellis for Ali Long. Certainly not a bad record on the USA's part of this calendar year, just the draw against France and victories otherwise. Yellow card here for the combative Wu. And those victories, Derek, come against top opponents in England, Germany. Germany, although probably not at their best, historically speaking. Canada, one of the up-and-coming teams in the world. The U.S. got two results against them. Some impressive results. They'll try it again here. England, of course, interesting phase with Phil Neville now, the coach. Similar to what's happening with China, installing a high profile figure from the men's game without any previous coaching experience on the women's front. And I know there's a lot of talk about if that's the right thing for the women's game, but I say, hey, if it's the best coach, yeah, slot him in. And why think that a man can't coach a woman's team if they've never done it, and vice versa, why can't a woman coach a man's team? So they suit what you want to achieve, and they know how to bring a unit together. Why not give them that opportunity? And they've been struggling. I mean, they brought in Bruno Bini from yeah. France, the Icelandic coach, and so they went with the national and someone who does have experience. Did actually play in Yugoslavia for a spell in the late 1980s. I asked him how that came about. He was with Partizan Belgrade, and he said it was part of a cultural exchange which saw table tennis players from the former Yugoslavia going to China to learn more about that sport, and then the opposite applied with soccer and that's how he ended up at partisan belgrade said he thoroughly enjoyed it it was rather unusual at the time to find chinese footballers in europe back in the late 1980s only long and the throw in is what it'll be just the one goal for the us to see if Alex Morgan can they add to that Davidson it's a fine pass Let's see if we can use right hand side to good effect again but there's no and ball certainly it will be a corner Werther involved once more came off lead because what the U.S. Is, can be so effective at is playing those diagonal balls. Kristen Press gets on it, takes her player on. But opponents know that that's always an option, that they've got the pace to get in behind, that they do have center backs now with Davidson and with when Dahlkemper was on. They can hit those long diagonal balls to open up the match. Should make things easier internally for the U.S. Davidson with it, and that was certainly laced with a bit of menace. And Lloyd on the scene. Kick set up by Kristen Press just prior to that. And with Rapino out, it is Davidson that steps up, looks like to take him from both sides. The left footed young star, I mean, to be asked to take set pieces speaks a lot about her quality and confidence. Yeah, absolutely. So Davidson from the left hand side this time for the USA. Morgan did her best to get there. That's going to go out of play. Water couldn't do anything about it. 
inside the final quarter of an hour. Well, it's good to see Wert out there in an outside back position. She doesn't play there for club, but it's more than likely the role that she will play for the U.S. if she can make this squad. Distributing. Lloyd trapping it. She's looking a bit perplexed. And calling offside. She wondered exactly where she was positioned. And now there's going to be a big cheer because Amy Rodriguez will be coming on. Utah Royal and all. And Alex Morgan, smile on her face. Having scored the goal. They Breakthrough goal of this match. Amy Rodriguez, it's been a while. And so popular here. Scoring against Portland, the first goal in Utah Royals history in the NWSL. So delighted to be back in the fold, Ali. After injury. And she's been a player that has come in for Utah and been so important in the way they can play because they haven't had anyone that's been able to stretch the back line and be dynamic up top she's providing that so getting her healthy was a massive bonus for this utah fc utah royals fc squad excuse me and now getting a look back with the u.s team after being out with pregnancy and then acl it's been a long haul away from the game for her there's two full seasons a rod as she's affectionately known <laughs> and mama <laughs> well, let's see if she can play her part in the closing minutes here in Utah. Davidson. And here's Rodriguez. Done. So they heard the footsteps of Jan. Funded forward by Nea. It's Lin who headed the ball away for China. Covering in front of the defence, Zhang. Li Ying. Trying to let Davidson know she was there. Let's see if a hole will emerge in the Chinese defence, that's the case. Press was happy to take on the opportunity. Perhaps her eyes were too big in that moment because as she was laid in behind in the U.S., they're having their success now with being more direct in their approach, not trying to go centrally. She had Amy Rodriguez far post flying in and she just laid that across early. Chance for Kristen Press to join the 100 Caps Club in Cleveland on Tuesday. Played in four of the seven matches for the USA at the Women's World Cup in 2015. Started two of them. went overseas to Sweden, Derek, just to kind of find her form again. That's where she found it initially and made her way onto this U.S. scene. Stagnant, perhaps, a little bit in her development, and going abroad seems to suit her well in that style of play. Done. Lewis. Trying to make the connection with Lloyd. been a popular venue this hasn't it and a good crowd too terrific it's not really a bad viewing position here either that's very close to the action stadium in the shadows of the 
Wasatch mountain range. Well, thumbs up it will be at the end of the game if the US can add to their advantage. But at this point, I still think the US have a lot to, to work on against systems as China is, is going about today. Pass by Zhang Rei for Yang Li, that left hand side. Sofia Huerta attending to her defensive duties, and Nea had to be careful with that, had to get rid of it. Almost just a little scare there for the USA. No damage done. for the direct approach that time, Alyssa Nea. Some US who stepped in. Wu for China. Carly Lloyd was close to her. Scraped away by Pung. The down was by Long. Ali Long again. Sauerbrunn. was in there that's gone all along the ground ah, the vicinity. that was such a good look by where to, and good movement by Kristen press to pull off that back line where to gets her head up has time and space because of press's movement and then Carly Lloyd just slipping in between the center backs too much pace on it the really good look and ball sliced in there and almost ghosting in wasn't she Carly Lloyd Good idea by Sofia Huerta. Just wonder what the thought process of Jill Ellis will be now, Ali, going into the second game against China on Tuesday. I would think continue the rotation of the players to spread out the minutes and share the workload. Perhaps Morgan Bryan gets some minutes. Her return from Lyon, that spell overseas ended. Perhaps Merritt Mathias gets a look as well. Tobin Heath maybe, although not involved at all tonight. We shall see. China are going to make a couple of changes. I've got Han Pang ready, as well as Li Qingqing. Our Brun, Huerta. And you can even see the, the discipline of the Chinese compact lines is, is waning as this match progresses. They are committing more numbers forward, not as determined to get back and resolute in that 4 5 1. So here we go. If the personnel switches. Set for Wang Shuang. Be replaced by Li Qingqing. Also coming on is Han. Departing the scene. Lo Jia Wei. phase of this game. Dunn takes the throw. Yeah, 
Rodriguez. Let's know where the goal is. Stay in play, it does for Lee Dan Yang. US know they must concentrate to the maximum in these last few minutes. Don't want any accidents here. Dump. That grinds to a halt. Offside flag has gone up, Ali. It's going to be massive for the U.S. to pick up a shutout. They've only had three in their last ten matches, which is a surprise because this unit, this squad, is typically known for being tight defensively, hard to break down. But there have been some miscues along the way. Would you describe this as a good learning experience for the U.S. with the matches coming up? I would absolutely say it was a, a, the right test for this squad. I, I don't know that a lot was figured out today with how they're going to break down the opponent. It came very direct in the second half, and, and yes, that's one way to get around the edge with pace. The U.S. will always look for that bread and butter, but you know maybe when a Rose Lavelle comes back, when Mallory Pugh, internal combinations and interplay will, will become more of a factor and element because when you face opponents that are as fast as you you're not going to be able to, to just get around the outside at your will well, the u.s know they've got to get players back in a hurry Ying with that little touch for china she's gone up into the penalty area not the only one in there either the lead by li jing jing Three minutes to go. But they are going after it when they have numbers. China, that is. Had runners in the box on that service. Well covered by the U.S. No pressure on the ball. Allows that service to come in. And then Dunn just bodies off her player enough to disrupt the path to ball. Take off, unfortunately, for Huerta. Just got a little bit sloppy, haven't they, in the last two or three minutes, the US? And some changes coming in can always disrupt that flow. That is one of the great meetings in women's football, the US and China, and the U.S. dicing with a bit of danger, but it's offside against Li Qingqing. Almost over the line in this match. And sometimes it's the a question of the chicken or the egg. Is the U.S. getting more sloppy because there is higher numbers by China pressing in a bit deeper? Or is it just the, the lack of cohesion by this squad that's out there right now? makes complete sense for for China to push in in these last minutes give their yep. their team an, a learning opportunity themselves Ja their coach is gonna make one last change so you coming on and to think this was his first spell with his squad I'm incredibly impressed at how disciplined and organized they were yeah I think that's very fair comment training. isn't it yep. yeah limited time to work with these players Li Ying sees that her number is up. Did have that chance in the first half, couldn't take advantage of it. Fired the ball straight at Alyssa Naya. That's such a fair point too, Derek, because the U.S. could have found themselves down one nothing had she slotted that one home. It's held by Naya. Approaching 90 minutes. Still, China believe they can damage the U.S. defense. So the player has just come on in the middle, but it's got now maybe for the U.S. to get players forward. Rodriguez. 
Gonna have a minimum of three added minutes here. Rodriguez for the US. Will be there to finish it off and press at a corner in stoppage time here in Salt Lake City. And you see she's got her head up. The run just isn't there. She tries to buy some time. Lloyd coming in a little bit late. I don't know that that's the right ball. Carly Lloyd maybe cut that one back, slotted into her path instead of out in front. Surprised Amy Rodriguez just didn't take on there with her pace. Turn and burn. We get to see another Davidson corner. She's acquitted herself pretty well with the previous ones. Tiona Davidson, the 19 year old. And well, that wasn't a bad corner at all. It's kept alive by the US. It's Mewis. There'll be another one exactly where the US would want the ball at this stage of the proceedings, Ali. Yeah, and it's a friendly, so you, no reason to kill the match off, sitting up one nothing. A lot of these players vying for, for minutes, vying for a role in the qualification. Well, the fans here at Salt Lake City would love it for the US to finish with a flourish. Davidson, US, now press. Turned by Dunn. Through the legs of Saboni. But uh, did away by Wu. Which players in particular, Ali, would you single out for the US this evening? Crystal Dunn is the first one that rolls off my my tongue in terms of her impact being dynamic. Obviously, Megan Rapino, she's always bright and taking on, and with her set piece service, that Alex Morgan was more apparent in that second half. He was one of the players you were referencing. Dunn. Rodriguez. Another corner. Concession of a corner by Lynn. I think with the center mids, Derek, with both halves, they're all very similar type players, and we just didn't see enough out of them attacking-wise in terms of combining and getting forward and, and being an option underneath. So Tiona Davidson, maybe for the last time in this game. The corner for the U.S., and, oh, they couldn't quite finish off the chance. Well, it was... Bang, denying Lloyd. And it's such a good ball by Davidson. She just keeps dropping these in. They're floating. Carly Lloyd times it perfectly well. Rises up, knocks it down, but it's right at Pong. We've had the three added minutes. Still look to get forward, the USA. Carly Lloyd. Putting in the challenge. Not the referee says that will be all for this evening. It is a victory for the USA against China. Jill Ellis will have learned a lot about her players, as always is the case. Alex Morgan with the lone goal of record, set up by Megan Rapino, that beautifully whipped in free kick. And Morgan did the rest, the two coaches. The handshake. Crystal Dunn certainly catching the eye in this game. And how versatile is she? I mean, she played in three different roles and numerous times throughout the match. That is a huge asset for the U.S. going forward. Megan Rapino had another bright night, and she's going to continue with her form and confidence and be one of the leaders of this squad, even if she doesn't have that captain's armband on tonight. I think overall for the U.S., you can see how explosive they are. That's what we say about this team all the time. But they lacked a little bit of understanding and tactical nuances of how to break down a team that sits low. And they're going to have to continue to figure that out. And as they head into qualifying, where they're more than likely going to face it in multiple matches, especially in group stage.
All right, let's go downstairs to Katie Witham, who has with her Crystal Dunn. Well, Crystal, you guys knew or thought that China may be a little defensive today. It seemed like they were hard to break through, but you finally did it. How were you guys able to do it? Um, you know, this game required a lot of patience. I think, you know, at some point we were a bit frustrated, feeling like we're just possessing, possessing, and not really going anywhere. But, you know, eventually we got a good free kick. Free kick. We know Pino is amazing, obviously, at her services. So um, sometimes it comes down to a set piece, and we practice all the time, and, and that's what's going to make the difference in some games. You told me before the Mexico games that you take it as a compliment to play multiple positions. You played three different ones throughout this game, and you were effective in all three. How did you do that? Um, you know, I just I stick to the basics. You know, soccer is soccer, and I feel like, yes, it's a bit different when you're playing in multiple positions, but for me, it's about where can I be to help my teammate out and um, how can I make an impact? What do you take from this one to help build upon before your next game against China? Yeah, I think we definitely have some things that we could do a little bit better um, going into the next game, but that's the good thing about these friendlies is we have time to kind of work on it and, and perfect our, our game. So I think for us, it's, you know, keep the patience, but also let's penetrate a bit more. Appreciate the time. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Crystal Dunn certainly playing in multiple positions in this match, Ali. Let's just retell the story of the game and the U.S. up against something of a Chinese wall in the first half. Yeah, and they retreated often, the Chinese did, and the U.S. found it difficult to break down, but Crystal Dunn said she wanted more penetration. Well, she took it upon herself to do it. Here she's in a situation where she takes two on. Alex Morgan gets to that near post, but passed it, not able to redirect that on frame. But China, I mean, they, they sat back, and this was one of their brightest moments. Probably the best opportunity to this point in the match came from China. And right there, not able to get it past the listener. U.S. was creating some pressure and earning set pieces. Megan Rapino so good with their service. That one falls at the feet of Zerboni. She's unable to connect on it. And then Rapino, oh, is it exciting, oh, is it entertaining. It says, oh, I'm going to beat you twice and then I'm gonna try to find my buddy at that near post a little bit of sass and hear about this this is one of the reasons you have Megan Rapino out there it's for that set piece service and Alex Morgan connects on it reads it well times it and really bodies off her own defender to be there to it and then Davidson steps up when Rapino's not in to swing this in and she floated in some nice ones Carly Lloyd with the late entry into the match, rises up, times it well, heads it down, but unfortunate for her, it's right at the feet of Pong. So there we have it. Just the one goal for the USA, and these two teams will do it again in Cleveland, Ohio on Tuesday. The US won China nil. We'll be back after this. The fajitas are sizzling at Golden Corral every night, just $13.99. Flame roll sirloin, seasoned shrimp, and spicy chicken. It's sizzling fajita night, just $13.99. Golden Corral, your choice rules. I'm Tobin Heath, midfielder for the U.S. Women's National Team. It sounds silly, but I've been coached by the best coaches in the world, and my youth coaches still to this day, I think I consider them the best coaches that I've ever played for. I just care deeply about the development um, of youth in, in our countries because I had people that did that for me and like I have to then do that for others. Check out more of my story at celebratingsoccer.com. Five days away from the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup. And tonight, a 1-0 result over China. The U.S. happy because they got a goal from Alex Morgan. We are lucky enough to be joined over here on the set by the goal scorer herself. Alex, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, no worries. Alex, can you talk about how important it is to play a team like China who is so packed in their defensive block in terms of prep for qualifying coming up? Yeah, it's great because we don't see this that often and I think we struggled a bit tonight with it, just getting opportunities on goal. We wanted to play, get wide, get crosses in, but they were super compact and I think that forced us to change our tactics a little bit in the second half. We, we struggled a little bit tonight. There's been a lot of goals and consistency with you and Megan Rapino. Talk about that partnership that's been formed, and it looks like you both are having a lot of fun out there and super confident. I really enjoy playing with Pino, and I feel like 
Before it was like Kino is unpredictable to her opponents and her teammates, and now I feel like she's so unpredictable to her opponents. But I totally get on the same page with her. Um, I love playing with her, and she keeps it. She just is always has this energy about her. Um, she reads the game really well, and I love that. Awesome. I think Leslie and I both want to play with her because <laughs> it seems so much fun out she's there. It's pretty fun, yeah. Alex, you now have 13 goals in 14 games. Clearly, you feel like you're feeling pretty good right now. What's been the key, though, to maintaining that consistency? Obviously, just confidence from the coaches, um, consistency with, um, you know, lineups with, with Pino. Unfortunately, Mal is out with her injury. She'll be back soon enough. But um, we had some great players stepping in tonight, some newer faces with McCall, um, with Sav. Uh, it's it's great to see also Sam U.S. coming back in. But um, we're, we are looking for that consistency, and I think we're getting there little by little. But obviously, we want to be peaking around qualifiers in October, not right now. So you're four months out exactly. What's your focus individually and collectively? Individually, I just want to have a good club season. I mean, I want to feel confident in both national team and club. So um, there's been some inconsistency there with Orlando a little bit. So um, just getting back in, getting in stride with the team in Orlando. And here, um, it's it's all about just continuing to build on what we um, on what we already have, the foundations we already have. We've talked a lot about culture because we have such a young team right now, a lot of new faces that have only been here for a year or two or less or a couple months. So it's all about kind of bringing the newer kids in and, and kind of showing them, you know, how it is within the national team and kind of bringing them in close and, and getting them to, up to speed quick. Absolutely. Alex, appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Congratulations on another win. Thanks. I know you got to get in the locker room. Yep. <laughs> Head on out. 90 minutes in the books, but the U.S. will face China again tonight, though. The result one nothing. More from the postgame show coming up next. Just when you thought we'd eradicated Taco Bell's naked chicken chalupa, it's back with a vengeance, along with a spicy new wilder version. So when it comes to Taco Bell's mild and wild naked chicken chalupas, heed my advice and say no to spice. Brought to you by the council and not Taco Bell. Welcome back to Sandy, Utah. The final score tonight between the U.S. and China. one nothing thanks to an Alex Morgan goal. But earlier this week, a legend for the U.S. women's national team was honored. Cindy Parlow. Cindy, stand up. Is she hiding in the back? Cindy, I am here. It's my distinct honor to let you know that uh, uh, for your extraordinary achievements, and this game, you are being inducted into the National Soccer Hall of Fame. And we are here with uh, Carla Worden Overbeck and Bill Palladino. And here is your medal. And this is a scarf that I am not going to put on you. And all of your incredible achievements, gold medals in the Olympics, so world championships, obviously we're counting uh, the national championships at UNC. On uh, October 20th in Frisco, Texas, you will be a part of the induction ceremony for this year's class. Can I ask my boss to talk to you <laughs> Does she have any freedom to <laughs> What an honor, Cindy Parlow, uh, one of the inductees for the Hall of Fame, and she was so fun to watch, retired as the fifth all-time leading scorer at the time, and she's still the youngest soccer player, male or female, to ever win a World Cup and an Olympic gold medal. But who does she make you think about? Well, first of all, it's just so deserving. Yeah, I mean, incredible deserving. career. I'm so happy I had a chance to play with her, so congratulations to her. But, you know, you think about her and you think about Mallory Pugh and the impact she's made on this team and how special player she is and how much she's actually grown in the last three years since she's made this Olympic team. Her game is continuing to evolve. She's fearless. She's a, an amazing 1v1 artist. But what she's also getting better at, she's just becoming more versatile. She's combining more, and her game is just continuing to grow. We're going to be seeing a lot more of Mallory Pugh on this team for a long way to come. We just hope that her injury is short and she's back out on the field soon. So you played with Parlo. You get to watch Pugh very close up. You see some similarities? Totally. I mean, they're different players, right? Cindy Parlo is going to win a lot in the air. She's physical. Mallory Pugh is fast, athletic, likes to go 1v1, but they're both smart players. They both score a lot of goals, especially in big, big moments. All right. Well, let's head back up to the booth and check in with the two that called this one, Derek Ray and Allie Wagner. Yes, thanks, Casey. No doubt that was quite frustrating for U.S. fans watching for long periods of the game against a defensive-minded side but an organized team. But a worthwhile exercise for you, Ali? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I said earlier, too, this U.S. side hasn't really faced low blocks until 2016 when they faced Romania. And then in the NWSL, think about the way those matches play out. It's a transition, high-paced game. So these players really aren't getting those exercises unless you include Houston in that. That would be the only team that challenges you tactically in the NWSL different. So this team is built to play in space. They know how to play in space. They know how to exploit it and hit it hard, but they don't know how to create it yet. And I think that's where the U.S. has to get to if they want to evolve and get to that next level. Maybe they won't need to because other teams just can't stop how dynamic they are, but I do think that they have the capability and the talent. And I think you saw in Alex Morgan a little bit of frustration that that connection wasn't there. Briefly, do they change things at all for Tuesday night? I think you change some personnel. I think you rotate the squad. Uh, and I absolutely think you have to get someone in the center of the park that adds a different element. Today, the first half and the second half, they're all uh, very similar in profile, the, the 6, 8, and the 10. And no one was the link-up play, the player that could break things open and help spring a Rapino so she wasn't having to go 1v1. Connecting with Savannah McCaskill, I think that's where the disconnect occurred and someone needs to fill that void. Maybe it's you have to wait till Rose Lavelle is healthy again. Thanks for tonight, partner. See you on the yeah. World Cup coverage next week. 1-0 to the USA. Alex Morgan with the only goal. Katie and Leslie are back to wrap things up in a moment on FS1. Well, this one is in the books here tonight from Rio Tinto Stadium. one nothing the U.S. over China, but we inch closer and closer to the Men's World Cup. Kickoff a week away, seven days until we are live in Russia. I know our eyes are going to be glued to that. All the coverage on your Fox networks back here down on the sideline with Leslie Osborne. I'm Kitty with them. Thanks so much for sticking with us here tonight. And Leslie, you heard Ali Wagner talk about what she wants to see. Maybe a little switch up with different personnel. What do you want to see after this result? Well, absolutely. You rarely get opportunities to respond. So how is this team going to look back and go, how can we break down this um, defensive block? So for me, it's giving players more opportunities. So give Ashlyn Harris or Abby Smith a game. Get them in here. These are the games you want to give goalkeepers experience since they don't have any. And Merritt Mathias, play her. See if she can adapt to this international level. But also change up the midfield. Things weren't clicking today. Give McCall Zerboni another opportunity to perform at the international level. Sam Lewis needs to get in that game and connect more. They can't just rely on the, the long diagonal ball in the direct play and really trying to figure out how to get the ball and switch it faster because China was so confident packed using the wings more yeah you are an expert when it comes to the women's national team and the midfield so hopefully we do see an improved effort coming up in their second game against china here soon well thank you so much for joining us here in sandy utah for leslie osborne derek ray ali wagner and our entire fox sports crew i'm katie with them saying thanks for joining us and good night from sandy utah the final score once again from rio tinto stadium the united states won china nothing